Ahoy! We've got some news today that Jay Oddity called the worst balance update yet. I want to discuss that a little bit. I don't really agree with that assessment, but I want to discuss the separate changes and also talk about some other news. Now, don't get me wrong, I am absolutely aware of the dire state that New World is in, both in the new season with all the new issues, as well as in general, there's massive player bleed with pretty much no reason to come back for anyone so far. But I'd still like to value the announced changes based on how good I think they actually are and not how the state of the game itself is, because I think those are two independent things. Now, first of all, one thing that was announced last week that I didn't fit in anywhere else that they didn't mention here, but which might be coming in the same patch as many of these changes, is an update to arena rewards. They are aware that the rewards are not good enough and they want to increase them. We'll see if they do a full revert here and we can use this to grind PvP track again or if it's going to be some middle ground. The devs also acknowledged the issues with the Season 5 launch. They said there were a lot of issues and their number one priority is to make things feel like before Season 5 again in the new combat system. Speaking of changes done with the new combat system, the Equip Load CC modifier, where Light would actually have longer CC, has been reverted or will be reverted. Duration will once again be 0% quadrant roll reduction in Light, 10% in Medium and 20% in Heavy. They still want additional ways to set the Equip Loads apart, but they don't want them to be as punishing as previously. Also, they said that the Heavy Shield may have too much block stability, so they're decreasing the block stability from 15 to 10% in both Heavy and Light. The statement confused me at first, but what it means is the block stability decrease in Light is going down from minus 15% to minus 10%, whereas the block stability increase in Heavy is going down from plus 15% to plus 10%. So blocking between different weight classes is a bit more similar. When it comes to artifacts, we're seeing some buffs to the least popular ones. Winged leather shoes will get a bonus damage effect during haste. This could be very strong on certain weapons, bow, sword and shield, maybe musket, maybe rapier even, uh, possibly even flail, even though I think the increase there might not matter that much. But overall, I think this will definitely make this an interesting artifact, depending on the exact values that we are getting here. Additionally, Magnetic Gauntlets is getting a change or buff, uh, with the crit damage reduction being reduced by 30% instead of 50%. At first I thought this might actually open up some interesting builds in PvP, but the problem is that even in light you have a 15% crit reduction, so in PvP you effectively still have 45% reduction at least that you need to get through, which very few weapons can in the first place. You have to have a 1.4 multiplier or perks that get you there, and then you add Vicious onto that and you can barely make it past that. In theory, you could get more of Rogue, but then you wouldn't be running Magnetic Gauntlets in first place because you're looking for backstabs and you're effectively reducing the damage of those otherwise. So really, I still don't see much more use for this than before. I think the 30% value is simply uh, too high and it's still pretty much purely a utility artifact for Void Gauntlet. As somebody in the comments pointed out, surprisingly, Ghoul Gloves didn't see a mention here at all. Shrieking Empower as a specific perk was talked about because it's not really used. It's apparently lackluster, especially when it competes with things like, I quote, Shirking Heels. That is incorrect. It doesn't compete with Shirking Heels at all. It's an amulet perk, and Shirking Heels is an armor perk. What it does, however, compete with, assuming we're locking health and protection on most amulets, is stamina recovery, in my opinion, one of the most broken perks in the game still, that they're just not willing to touch or nerf, which makes no sense to me at all. The cooldown incredibly short, the value that you're getting incredibly high, and that's why most people in most situations are not running Shrieking Power. And the much easier solution to that, in my opinion, would be to finally balance stamina recovery. What they're doing now is increasing the Empower and making it easier to stack. Currently it has four stacks with 4% Empower total 16%, and it will have three stacks, which gives you 7% empower each for a total of 21%. I think in wars for builds that don't rely on stem recovery and benefit from power, this could be fairly useful now. We're getting a ton of weapon changes. The bow, they stated, is a very strong, powerful weapon and it's also very safe. I think that is generally true. The problem with the bow at the moment is that it's very bugged in various ways, the abilities had to be disabled, uh, there are issues with the projectiles, there are all kinds of different things going on that make it very difficult to determine what the state of the bow currently is. Uh, they say that currently it has high damage attacks and dots, 
and they are tuning down the dots a little bit. So Poison Shot is getting a duration reduction from 10 to 7 seconds and Rain of Arrows Barbed Arrow upgrade is reduced from 15% scaling to 9% scaling per tick. So overall somewhat significant nerfs I would say at least and they say this is because they want the fire staff to be the dot heavy weapon and not the bow. It is interesting that other weapons like for example the musket don't get a similar treatment in that context. By the way if you're enjoying the video so far then consider subscribing and clicking the bell and if you'd like to support me further you can do so on Patreon. It is somewhat surprising to me that they're doing these changes to the bow while they're holding out on some other changes on other weapons because of all the issues those have. So not quite sure why the bow is getting treated differently there. On the other hand, I don't think a bow nerf is entirely unexpected or out of the blue here. The bow has been performing fairly well even before Season 5, so not really a big surprise. And of course, a lot of bow players are very upset about this, but I don't think the general player population that is not playing bows is particularly upset about the bow getting a bit of a nerf here. So the Blunderbuss Exhaustive Netshot tooltip was apparently wrong because it says that the target stamina duration is reduced by 60%, but that is capped at 50%, which was introduced not all that long ago, so maybe that's why it's still just an old tooltip. But either way, it's now getting nerfed down from 50% to 41% maximum, so that's going to be on the weapon. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to get nerfed further down on armor, so maybe 30% on armor. Even as a blunderbuss enjoyer, I think this is a very appropriate nerf. I thought that this uh, effect was always overtuned compared to other stamina regeneration reduction effects, so I'm completely fine with this finally being done. Next we have everyone's favorite at the moment, the Fire Staff. Now, the Fire Staff is getting the reasoning that I kind of expected for the bow. The Fire Staff is strong right now, but currently has some issues which makes it hard to get an accurate read. So their goal is to fix those issues as soon as possible, to have a better idea of what the real balance issues are versus what are just bugs. Fire Staff is extremely frustrating to play against. In Season 5, the burst is higher than ever for a variety of reasons. And there is a change that is coming here, which is actually a buff to the Fire Staff. But this buff, in most situations, won't actually affect you. Because what they're doing is they're buffing the damage from Flare. Flare is what turns your heavy attacks into a 1 meter radius splash attack instead. But what it also does is it reduces your heavy attack damage to 110% weapon damage, whereas normally a single target heavy attack does 140%. This is now getting buffed to 120%, so a 10% increase, but still 20% less than the single target version. And yes, if you hit a single target with this, it will still deal the reduced amount of damage. It's not just the AoE part that's reduced, all of it is reduced. So most players will likely still not spec into this. Maybe in some war scenarios, if you're meant to new clumps or something, there might be an outlier there, but it's more of a PvE thing really, if anything because most people value their single target damage more than they value their multi-target damage if it means taking a hit towards their single target damage. So while this is technically a buff, I don't think you will really notice this anywhere. The flail was designed with intentionally low DPS and they say now maybe it's a bit too low. So what they're doing is buffing the leader of the pack perk, bumping those numbers a little bit. The version menu alone is increased from 10% to 15% and this one is base damage, so it's quite nice. The group version is increased from 5% to 10% and this is an empower. While a consistent 10% empower for PvE is absolutely nice, it is worth keeping in mind that this is just in a 5 meter radius. If you leave this radius, you're not getting anything. So you have to be pretty close to the flare user to get benefit from this. They say the main goal of the flail stakes utility and I think that is absolutely true. I don't think a 5% base damage increase when alone will suddenly massively ramp up the other abilities. I have seen people try to do flail burst builds and honestly, it didn't go well at all. The only way people made it work was by simply being very good at the game and outskilling their opponents, but in terms of damage output that was possible compared to other weapons that do it easier than the flail, the flail was just not very impressive. And that's okay, the flail has enough going for itself, the only issue is that it's just super hard countered by grit. The headshed gets one of the most interesting changes of this patch. Keen Berserk currently has a health condition, you need to be below 50% health to get all these effects, which people obviously don't like. But now this condition is removed and the values are adjusted in return. 
They say the maximum is around 20%. Currently, assuming they're talking about crit rate here, this is 50%. So you would have that if you have it on your weapon, a consistent 20% crit chance uh, while Berserk is active. Not insane by itself, but we also have to see what happens to the base damage values. Overall, I think this is going to be strong. I think this is going to be valued, depending on what scaling we're getting on armor and so on. But I think this could be cool. Also, they mentioned some planned fixes for the hatchet. On one hand, the Berserk Stun Cleanse. And on the other hand, they are saying here that there are hatchet aimed throw bugs. From what I understand, that may mean that we are finally finally getting the hatchet fix that I've been asking for for so long when you use the rending throw and you want to do a right click throw afterwards which is well overdue but I would just be happy if it's fixed like similar thing to the arena rewards. The musket is apparently very hard to balance because they're trying to give it more usability without making it too strong in OPR and I can understand that but that's more of an OPR issue just put up some more walls in OPR and that's solved. They're planning to remove the accuracy penalty when rotating the camera, which I think is very reasonable. I think the downside should be the drop-off that you have on projectiles now, and that's what things should be balanced around. And I particularly like this as well because it means that close-ranged muskets is going to be a little bit easier, and that's really what I want. I want the trapper build, and that's just not been possible fully so far. Also facilitating that, they're increasing the knockback on stopping power from 3 meters to 5 meters. The dead eye capstone, the left side capstone for the musket, currently has a double headshot condition. This is being changed to hitting two targets with the same shot, no headshot required instead. It applies a 15% bleed for 5 seconds. I think this is solid and I think there's a more reasonable approach here. But really it's very likely no one's going to use this because they are also buffing the lethal combo capstone which will now apply to effects from all of your abilities. This is increased musket damage by 20% against targets that are affected by trapper tree debuffs. So now you can just apply a powder burn and just the base duration alone with all the additional effects that can increase the duration it gives you 9 seconds of burn during which everything should deal 20% more damage. This was possible previously, you could do the same thing with stopping power, but you had to sacrifice Deadeye for that, which is now, I think, much more worth it. You're losing 15% headshot damage, and you gain 20% damage in general, and that odd bleed chance now, but really, I think, pretty much everyone is just gonna go right tree, especially because you can kind of get away with that without losing any very significant points in the left tree that would cost you a lot of damage. In my opinion, this change stands out as the worst one in this patch and the most likely one to be dialed back as well. The rapier gets a very interesting mechanics change. They say that the rapier is generally a good weapon, but Deadly Flourish, the perk in particular, is fairly useless. It's just a perk that is hardly ever used because it only amplifies uh, Flourish, which is by itself not a very high damaging ability. What it will now also do is apply the rapier bleed. There are multiple ways in which this can be used effectively. Of course, you could do a Tondo into Flurry into Flourish and Finish, but I don't think that's actually the most effective way because Tondo has a very short cooldown, the others don't. Uh, but what I want to point out here specifically, and save the rest for a separate video maybe, is that Flourish and Finish can therefore be used much better in PvP. If you can get a Tondo off and a Flourish and Finish off, you're already getting off two bleed stacks at that point, which is a very significant amount of damage in PvP situations. So I really think this could open up some interesting playstyles for the Rapier in PvP. The Spear is unsurprisingly getting some nerfs, since it currently has high DPS and utility. First of all, the 20% reduced stamina consumption for evasive maneuvers now only applies for the next dodge within 2 seconds, instead of all dodges within 2 seconds. I'm not sure how often people are really double dodging after this, but the other one I think is more relevant, which is invigorating crits. Now, instead of the current effect where it gives you a flat value, it increases the stamina regeneration whenever you crit. This will be significantly less noticeable. We have strong conditioning on the left side as well, which already has this regeneration effect and you barely notice it in comparison to invigorating crits, which is just insane. So stamina for spear overall going down quite drastically. And I am also not surprised that this is happening. I think they're kind of moving away from too much stamina coming from weapons in general with how stamina management has been changed over time. But that is not all. Fortifying Perforate also gets its value reduced. We don't know by how much. 
They say currently the spear is top of the list for most modes and the main purpose of the weapon is DPS so they mostly want to go after utility here and not reduce the damage itself, kind of the opposite of what they're doing with the flail. Again, I think this is completely fair enough. When it comes to sword and shield they say it's very strong and very well used and they want to do something controversial here, they are going to buff it. But what they are going to buff are the abilities that are currently not used. So they're not buffing shield bash, shield rush or leaping strike, which are basically the staple for almost all SNS builds. Instead, they are buffing Defender's Resolve first of all. They are improving the taunt, the activation time and the cooldown reduction, hopefully that also means the animation. And the final upgrade for the cell feel is changed from 15% of your maximum HP to 30% of your base HP. This is beneficial for lower health builds, but obviously not beneficial for super high con builds. So I am not the biggest fan of this change, even though they say it opens up more builds uh, with this playstyle. I don't see many uh, low con builds that would be using Defender's Resolve in the first place. Willing Blade, which they say directly competes with the last hit of a light attack chain, gets its radius increased to set itself apart more here and may get more changes down the road. I'm interested to see what's going to happen there, but I also think the radius increase itself is already good because the current radius is somewhat underwhelming. Reverse Stab is not getting any changes yet, but will be entirely reworked in the future, in the near future it sounded like, uh, with better animations, make it easier to hit, and it will not even be a reverse stab anymore from what I understand. I think making all abilities on a weapon usable is a very good goal, so I am happy they're taking this path. They're doing something similar with the Warhammer, where they're buffing Mighty Gavel from 170% scaling to 190% scaling. Additionally, they're doing a change to it that I didn't really understand, because they said they are doing something to the upgrade that checks for the target's health, which I'm assuming they mean Summary Judgment, uh, which currently increases the Mighty Gavel damage by 20% to targets below 30% health. And they're saying it's getting bumped from 130 to 150, but that doesn't make sense. Either it's getting bumped um, from 120 to 150, so it's an even bigger buff here for the extra damage, or they misspoke about the 100 in front and they actually meant that it's now active below 50% health instead of below 30% health. Either one of the two, but either way, it's gonna be a significant damage increase overall. Uh, so far, Mighty Gavel was basically not worth using because Armor Breaker does almost the same damage uh, with a shorter cooldown, and it also gives you an armor break that penetrates uh, the target's armor. But now, maybe there could be some more of a selling point for Mighty Gavel as well, even though its animation may still stand in its way. When it comes to the Great Axe, they mentioned a Whirlwind buff. I'm not sure if they're referring to one of the Whirlwind buffs they already did, or if they're planning to do another one. That wasn't really clear to me. They said with a Void Gauntlet, they're currently bug fixing a lot, so they're kind of still waiting that out. Uh, with Life Taker, they said they responded right away, which had the wrong damage type. I would question the right away here. I think it took them quite a few days to, to get there when I think Micro pointed this out on the very first day of the patch. But it was still a reasonable uh, pace to respond, I would say. Hopefully, it can get even faster in the future. The life staff was one where they made a very questionable statement. They said, depending on the mode and situation, the life staff is simultaneously overpowered and underpowered. They still want to upgrade the skill trees for the life staff, but I really gotta ask, where is the life staff underpowered? The only thing, the only issue that I see with the life staff is that the navigation, the way you use it is incredibly clunky to this day, but I don't think that the healing values are in any way underpowered. On the contrary, I believe on the current patch we actually need more life staff nerfs. The Ice Gauntlet currently has a cool reduction bug with Entomb, so looking into that. The Greatsword is, according to them, really strong, useful and arguably OP, but only in the form of Serenity. Uh, I kinda gotta disagree with some of the assessments there. And I would love to see the stats they have to back that up, but those are the weapons. Outside of that, they also said that damage increased a lot and taunts are now not as effective. Therefore, they are increasing the overall amount of threat generation, so for example your Carnelian gems will have more threat generation, and also heavy attacks will do brief taunts, so you can regain aggro with that uh, quickly. Later on they want to do more visual updates to threat generation, uh, but yeah, that that's for the future but what i will say is that the damage increase wasn't really what caused the aggro issues i kind of like 
struggling for aggro a little bit as a tank, I think it's more interesting and makes things more challenging. Uh, but what caused all this is that Beloved is pretty much gone from the game. And you can notice this on Sandworm runs especially, that's that's where tanks um, kind of struggle uh, to hold aggro if the team is not still running old Beloved earrings. And there was never a reason to remove that in the first place other than making tanking more difficult. But if they didn't want to make tanking more difficult, because now they're trying to offset that again, I don't know why they did in the first place, but at least we don't need to have Beloved in the future, I guess. We can just have Carnelians and have more aggro with that. Another interesting change are changes to Siege Weaponry. They say that Siege Weaponry has basically been lackluster since launch, and they're increasing the power by roughly 50%, give or take, and maybe more buffs later down the line uh, applied for all modes. AoEs will last an extra second, and the goal is that wars are basically not just war haunts. Uh, they're also decreasing the cost of ammo supplies, and they are considering to add some sort of resilience or fortify to players sitting on turrets in the future, maybe give them some sort of shield. Having played wars on launch before people were level 60, it actually drastically changed how wars were played. Siege weaponry was a huge factor in some of them, and we had players go into heavy armor just so they can survive longer in the siege weaponry. I would love to see at least a partial return of that because I think it makes wars way more interesting when there are more approaches that are possible and more things that you need to consider. I don't believe a 50% damage increase will achieve this, but it's a start and they said they might do more. I should also mention that during the show there was an X rifle, X gun, whatever, on the table for the entire time, which might be a hint for a future weapon. It could fit well with the whole vampire theme that is likely going to happen. On the other hand, this could also just be a design for blunderbuss and the blade could be a cosmetic part. The team also heard our feedback regarding shows where they don't have anything new to say, where they're kind of just babbling. And they said from now on they will just show things when there are things to talk about. If they ever have nothing new to talk about, I wish they would give us some more visual insights into the stats that they're always talking about, rather than just saying we know this and that. I would love to see more details behind the scenes, uh, what stats they're actually using and so on. Overall, I don't think that these changes will massively affect the player base in any way. I don't think that they are killing the game, because the game is already in a very dead state right now. I don't think they will revive the game, but I think that some of them could be interesting to try out, so uh, my feeling on that is very in the middle. Let me know how you feel about this and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you want to get notified of future videos. If you'd like to support me further you can do so on Patreon and get early trading tips in return. Thanks to all of my patrons who already do exactly that and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.